Hello guys, and welcome to uh, the first of many videos I plan to put up on YouTube. Uh, I am the ATC student that uh, does do air traffic controlling regularly in FSX. Right off the back, the reason I call myself the ATC student is because I am currently an air traffic control student at Palo Alto College in San Antonio, Texas. Alright, we got that out of, out of the way there. Uh, what I plan to do on these sessions, guys, is I plan to kind of give you an insight of how we, as air traffic controllers, control y'all out there. I want I want you to see the other side of the, the, the communications, what we have to do. Uh, it currently is about 4 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday night, so I don't expect to get a lot of traffic right now, which is a good thing, because I kind of just want to go to generals with y'all. Um, if you do know how to do air traffic control, uh, and things like that, that's fine. You know, this video is kind of for the other people who want to learn or the people who like to see how it is when it gets pretty busy. Usually, I get about 15 to 20 people in my session a night. Um, right off the back, you can see I'm doing an airport called La Hula National Airport. The reason I do pick this airport is for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's in Hawaii. Whenever you're in Hawaii, you get really nice scenery. I mean, if you look at the scenery, it's just amazing what I what I tend to notice is a lot of pilots like to fly in really nice scenery because a lot of pilots like doing what's called a pattern a pattern is when you take off and you fly certain legs and then you come back in and land at the same airport a lot of there's a lot of reasons to do the pattern I mean doesn't do it you can do the pattern to get used to the aircraft you can do a pattern to get used to the airspace you can do a pattern to just look at the scenery there's no limit on what you can do when you fly the only thing I usually ask is people actually know what they're doing when they come in the session. Uh, right off the back here, I, I, I am using an SF, uh, FSMP add-on for the uh, air traffic control. This little screen right here, it, it's kind of the same thing, it just adds a little more information. This is your typical wind direction uh, altimeter screen. And the AOT 3008 is the altimeter setting right there. That's where we would give you the altimeter setting. It constantly changes, we constantly keep up with it. Also the wind, it says calm, so I don't have to give you any winds. I can just say winds calm. The, the, the wind, there's no wind at all. If we put up the next screen, which I believe it's for, this is a communications. Right now on a 118.75. I always post I always post uh, the information in the chat box. As you can see it's a uh, I have it on 1875 so I monitor that and then my second one I'll have the ATIS and that's where I will give you the information if there's any new ATIS information. The next screen is going to be our session info. Right now we are showing one person in the session, Warbird 2, P51 Mustang and it, you get all the information, 23 miles out, the ID, the community, he is on my frequency right now but he's 23 miles an hour so usually when he gets about 10 miles out I contact him. Here is our airspace, the radar screen right here. As you can see, Warber 2, if I click on him, he turns red. He's just, if you look just to the left side, he's just, it looks like he's taken off and he's not typically in my airspace yet. He doesn't have to contact me. I do control, the, the blue ring here is the class Delta. I control that. And I tend to control, I to control the corridor in for the iOS approach and I control almost pretty much the whole island. I do have a couple of little grass strips. I, I have two of the airports on the island, but I don't control those. I kind of just tell them to monitor Unicom if they want to do that, which is a frequency that they talk around if they, uh, they're they flying to another airport. And then I have my, uh, my VOR approaches, or my VORs here. So, um, yep, this is pretty much just it. The one thing that air traffic controls when you do air traffic control, you, you gotta expect to be just looking around. I mean, a lot of people probably just stare at the screen. I tend to watch TV. I watch TV until someone contacts me, and when someone contacts me, then I will come back in. But for right now, it's slow, which is fine. It's actually a good thing. When when you tend to do ATC and you get really really busy all the time, you just wanted to hurry up and be slow again because it, it, it's. I'm not gonna lie to you and say it's easy. It is very hard. You can't just come to an airspace and expect to control it really good. You gotta actually study the airspace. You gotta know where your VORs are. What I have is I have papers, these charts. It shows me all of my airspaces. It shows an aircraft, an airport diagram, which is uh, if someone say, if you look at my mouse and someone starts here and they want to taxi to this runway over here, I look at my diagram and I know, hey, they have to taxi via Juliet and Alpha and then Kilo. 
So uh, you you gotta have as an air traffic controller, you, you have to have all these charts, and pilots are expected to have all these charts too. So what we'll do here is uh, we'll go ahead and uh, cut it off. Looks like people are starting to join. Whenever people join, I do put the information in. And uh, when it, I'll probably fast forward this in the video. And when Warbird two, it looks like he's two two miles. When he's inbound, he's about ten miles out. He should contact me, and then we'll go from there. Um, I will be talking to y'all as I control to kind of tell y'all how air traffic controls have to anticipate how things happen, and we have to think ahead of time. It it is a lot complicated than you think, than most people think. But um, yep, I'll talk to you in a while. Wait until Warbird comes in here. Alright, so if, uh, if we look at Warbird 2 here, he's 17 miles out to the west. We have to start anticipating what, what he's going to want. We know that the active runway here is runway 3, so let's make it easier on ourselves. If you look, I think someone else just joined, if you look at our chart, if you look at our radar here, this line right here, I don't know if you can see it, is runway 3. So no matter what he does, he has to come in to runway 3. So when he contacts us, we have to listen to see if he has the ATIS information. The ATIS information is the weather information. It always is uh, distinguished by a letter. So he'll probably say Warbird 2. He announces his position and then he says we have information Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. If he doesn't say he has the information, then we have to give him the altimeter, which is up here. And we, we tell him what, what, what uh, we want him to do. I think someone was trying to contact me here. Radio check 176, Charlie, Mike. 176, Charlie, Mike, 5x5. Five all right, so 176 Charlie Mike is our first, uh... Warbird 2, he announced his position. He says he does have the information and he wants a lower approach. So now we just clear man for low approach, which is the option. Or we tell him to which direction. Warbird 2, roger, radar contact 11 miles. Make straight in runway 3. All right, so now we told Warbird to, we didn't give him... 176 Charlie Mike request, I to the active and VFR circuit for uh, Maui. 176... Lahui, okay, 176 Charlie Mike. We're going to give him, he didn't give us the ATIS, so we had to give him the ATIS information, and then we'll turn on the taxi. 176 Charlie Mike, roger, good afternoon, altimeters 3008, runway 3, taxi via Alpha. Taxi via Alpha, put the 03, So one... Sorry, 176 Charlie Mike is taxiing to the runway. Automatically, I knew from his position that I would have to taxi him via Alpha. And he's taxiing to runway 3, and he wants the pattern, which uh, which I said, I, I, I believe I specific earlier. What he's going to want to do is he's going to take off. I'm going to click on him. You can see him here. He's going to take off, and he, all he's going to do is fly around here and come back in and land. And he's just going to keep on doing overs and overs and overs. Warbird 2, if you noticed, I did not give him clearance to land because he is not in the Delta yet. I just told him to make straight in. So he's going to come over here and he's going to turn and make straight in at runway 3. The reason I did not give him clearance to land is because he is not in the blue ring yet. So I cannot give him clearance to land. And he wants a low approach. When I tell y'all, when I say people they're clear for the option, they're clear to do a low approach, a touch and go, a stop and go. They're clear to, to do a full stop landing. They're clear for everything. So we know that a 176 Charlie Mike is a 172. I'm writing this down. And he wants the pattern for runway 3. Automatically, I'm going to give him left traffic. So I'm going to expect him to take off, do a left 360 all the way around the airport, and come back and land. And it looks like Warbird 2 is close enough. Let me clear him in. Warbird 2, runway 3, clear for the option. When's calm? Pretty clear for the option. Runway 3, and it's going to be overhead. Initial right break. Warbird 2, roger. Okay, so War Warber 2, he's going to come in, he's going to get an initial approach, and he's going to do a right break, meaning that he's going to turn to the right. If you look at my mouse, he's going to turn to the right, and then he, uh, I think, I believe he says he's coming back in. So I'm going to expect him to turn to the right, turn, and then come back in front of three. And here he comes right now, so we can kind of look at him, since we don't have that much traffic right now. There's the Cessna. The Cessna, we're anticipating right now. He's going to say he's ready to go on way three, but look at that P-51, how fast he's coming. We can't kick him off yet. we got to tell him to hold short until that P-51 passes, and then we can tell the, uh, the Cessna that it's clear for takeoff. Let me turn this off. 
Maybe an assassin actually sees him. And when the Cessna calls me, I tell him which traffic. So I'll be like, uh, November 1, 7, 6, Charlie Mike. And then I'll say, runway 3, clear for takeoff, winds calm. And then I will say, which traffic pattern. I'll say, make left traffic. And then that's what you'll be doing. It looks like the people are starting to join. Whenever people join, I do post this information. Pretty much just says what the current, uh, there's a P-51 on his right brake. Just pretty much says what the current frequencies are. So let me zoom in on. Let me zoom in on this on this here because we 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 don't have anybody outside, so we'll kind of just look in this little ring right here. Warbird two's in the break and he's expecting clearance into land on runway three. So let me give him that right now. Warbird two winds calm runway three. Clear for the option. One seven six Charlie Mike is still good. I can still get him out because Warbird two. If you look, he has not started turning in yet. Six Charlie Mike holding short. Uh, three. Oh, number one seven six Charlie Mike winds calm runway three. Clear for takeoff. Make left traffic. I cleared Charlie Mike to take off, and now I have to tell this Warbird that his traffic is at one seventy two departing. So I'll let him know right there. Warbird two, your traffic's going to be a Cessna one seventy two departing runway three. He said Roger, he does not say he has traffic, so... I'm pretty sure he does. Look at how far he's out there. It, it's fine. The one thing that tower controllers, the, the one priority tower controllers have to do is they have to keep the runway active all the time. Active, 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 so... This is... This looks like a potential problem here. It might be because the speed difference. If you look, Warbird 2, he's at... 132 knots and Charlie Mike's barely at 63 knots so what I will do is I will tell Warbird 2 to break so he won't hit the traffic if anything let's see what he's gonna do actually I'm gonna tour 176 Charlie Mike to start his crosswind now November 176 Charlie Mike you can start your crosswind now Actually, uh, he's already starting it. One seven six Charlie Mike, you can start your uh, cross one. Starting cross one, Charlie Mike. This it looks like one seven. I don't know what one seven six Charlie Mike is doing. He, you, you are not supposed to fly the pattern that close. He's he's already. If you look, he's already. He's right over over the runway, and he's pretty much downwind already, which is not a good thing, but I'll let it slide this time. Let me clear him in. November 176, Charlie Mike, runway 3, clear for the option, winds calm. Clear for the option. Look, he, he's already oh, over here. Over to clear it out. Clear it out. Juliet. Like, Alright, so Warbird 2, which is this P-51, he just wants to taxi back, so I just tell him. Warbird 2, runway 3, taxi via Alpha. Yeah, this 176 Charlie Mike guy, I don't know what is he doing. Look at him. This is the point where you tend, as air traffic controllers, you probably have to kick some people here, so. And I'm kicking him. Let me tell him if he can start his uh, further out downwind. 176 Charlie Mike, on your, less, on your next pass, you can start a uh, further out downwind, please. Roger, no, don't extend. Someone else join, we post the information in the chat box. Warbird 2, can we get Warbird 2, Roger, only 3 taxi via Lima. What did he, what Warbird 2 asked?